Hi guys, welcome to this video on cues in the CSA. Now, a few of you guys have asked me to produce a video on cues because it's something that we tend to fear. Either we fear that we're going to miss them out in the first place, or we're not going to understand the importance of them, or maybe we're going to get the cues a little bit too late, and therefore it's going to affect our management plan. Now, I'm Amin Aurora, I'm a GP and a TPD based in Birmingham, and this video is all about some key don'ts to make sure that you're using your cues most effectively, using them most efficiently, and making sure that you're getting the maximum that you can out of the hints and tips that are coming our way throughout the 10 minutes. So let's get started. So the first thing to think about when it comes to cues is make sure you reflect cues there and then. Make sure you make it obvious that you've picked the cues up. Now we're doctors, we see things all the time. We see things that trigger our brain, we hear things that trigger our ears. And often what we do is we internalise these things. We've picked the cue up, but we've not made any demonstration to the fact that we actually have done that. So obviously you're going to be seeing things throughout the case, you're going to be hearing things throughout the case, and it's really important, like I said, to make sure that it's, you've got it there and then. So we'll start with the non-verbal ones. So you're going to see things like emotion in this exam. You're going to see people with anger. You're going to see people who are upset. You're going to see people who are frustrated and angry. There's no point seeing that emotion, internalising it, adapting your voice, adapting your body language, and doing everything because you've picked up that cue, except for vocalising the cue in the first place. So every time you see some emotion, make sure you say it. Hey, Mr. Smith, I can see this is really affecting you. I can see you're quite worried about this. Or Mr. Jones, look, clearly I can see you're quite frustrated by the questions that I'm asking. Bear with me, I'm almost done. Hey, Jessica, you do look a little bit frightened by all of this. Now, I hope everything's okay, um, but it does look like it's affecting you a lot. So whenever you see emotion in this exam, we're just very used to dealing with that, taking it and adapting ourselves. But you've got to get used to vocalising things, reflecting things there and then. Similarly, you're going to see other non-verbal cues. Someone's going to walk in with a walking stick. Someone's going to walk in with a limp. Someone's going to walk in with a hearing aid in or, or a bandage on their, their hand, for example. Again, there's no point you seeing that, internalising it, you know, and, and not, coming, not reflecting it there and then because you're not going to get the marks with the cue, even though you've done the hard work and you've seen it and it's triggered something in your mind. So if you see something, just say it. You know, Mr. Smith, I noticed you've got a walking stick today. That's not on my notes. Is that something new? You know, Mr. Jones, it might seem a little bit odd, but I've noticed you've got a hearing aid in today. Now, that's not something on my notes. Is that something new? So even if we have think this has nothing to do with the case, even though we think this can't be a cue, our mind has triggered you for a reason, so just vocalise it. Get it out there and then don't wait, don't come back to things. Similarly with verbal cues, now we're going to be hearing things throughout the 10 minutes all the time. Now some of them are designed to actually take us down a particular route, some are not. But we don't know that, so it's best to just say it there and then, so you don't forget it and you don't forget to come back to it. So for example, you're doing a red flag history for a young guy with back pain, mechanical back pain, and the guy mentioned in the middle that, oh doc, it's been difficult at work recently. Now how do we deal with that cue? Because that's an obvious cue there. Some people will internalise the word work and think, oh, I better come back to work later on. That's an important cue. Now, the problem is, by the time you come back to work later on, maybe two, three minutes down the line, it does, it's not obvious that you've done that because of the cue. It may just seem that you're coming on to work because that was the time you would have done it anyway. So you may have done the hard work and picked the cue up, internalised it, but you may not get the reflection in the mark for it. The other option, therefore, what some people do, is when they hear the word work, they will go off into work straight away. So they mention the word work and you start going on about how is work, tell me more, what do you do, have you spoken to your boss, have they said anything about it? Because you want to pick up on that cue and make sure that you're going down that route and getting the rewards for it. The problem with that is sometimes you're doing a red flag history, for example, and if you just bypass it and go off into work the moment they mention the word work, A, it looks a little bit unstructured because you're a little bit all over the place, and B, you might forget to come back and finish off your red flag history because the more you leave to come back to, the more you're going to forget, the more things are going to get missed out. So the best way to try and get around both those issues is to when you hear the cue or the thing that you think is a cue, a verbal cue, mention it there and then. Oh, Mr. Smith, you mentioned work. I'm actually going to come back to that in a little while. Or Mr. Mrs. Jones, you mentioned your relationship. I'll come back to that in a short while. So there's no doubt that you've got that cue there and then, but it allows you to finish off what you're doing. You don't get distracted by it, and you're still making sure that there's no sort of thought in the other person's mind that you've missed that cue. So in essence, it's all about reflection. When you see something, when you hear something, make sure you reflect it, vocalise it, get it out there, put it out it so that people can hear that you've seen it or you've heard it. Because there's no point internalising, doing the hard work and not getting rewards for it later on.
Now, the second thing that's really important not to do when it comes to cues is don't make the decision yourself as to whether it's a cue or not. Don't make that assumption that I think this is a cue, I don't think this is a cue, therefore I will go down this or I won't go down this path. It's a very, very dangerous thing to do. Now remember, like I said earlier, your mind is going to be triggering all the time. You're going to be seeing things, you're going to be hearing things, and you're going to be reflecting things there and then to see if they're cues or not. But sometimes we actually see something and we make a decision that this is unlikely to be a cue here, so I'm just going to walk over it and forget it even happened. Or we're going to hear something that we will pick up, but we'll make the decision that this is nothing to do with the case, I'm not going to go down there because it's probably not relevant. And next thing you know, you're hearing that cue second time, third time, or you're seeing that thing second time, third time, and then you realise later, oh gosh, this was a cue, and I should have gone onto it earlier, and it can get quite frustrating. So don't make that decision. Role players are trained. If you pick up on something that isn't a cue, and you mention it, if it's not a cue in the actual exam, they'll stop you dead. They'll make it obvious that this is not a path that you're supposed to go down. But we should be making that decision. Let them make that decision. Why do we sometimes make decisions? I guess sometimes we practice with colleagues, and I remember practicing with my colleagues with this exam, and if we pick up on something that we think is a cue, for example, and we start going down that route, and it isn't in actual fact anything to do with the case, we end up getting stuck in that thing for two or three minutes. We ask a few more questions because the, the other person who's acting hasn't got the, the training to stop it there and then and make it obvious that it's not a cue. So we don't want to lose time in this exam. We know that 10 minutes is precious. So we start making decisions as to whether we think this is a cue or not. Is it a valuable effort? Is it valuable use of my time to go down that path or not? And we make a decision to do it or not to do it. But remember in the exam, you don't make that decision. Let the role player make the decision. You just pick it up. You vocalize it like we said earlier and let them tell you if it is or isn't. For example, you know, you might get someone like we talked about with that walking stick earlier on. So if you mention, oh, Mrs. Smith, I noticed that you've got a walking stick today. Is that something new? Now, if that isn't a cue, they'll very quickly say, oh, no, no, doctor, I've had this for years, don't worry about it, i.e., move on. However, if that is a cue, and you pick it up and you mention that, they will take you further down that route. Oh, yeah, doctor, my um, cousin gave me this last week. He thought it might help with the hip pain. It actually helps quite a bit. Do you think I need one? So what I'm trying to say is don't make that decision yourself. We have no knowledge of this patient. We have no knowledge of what this case is all about. So if we start deciding this is a cue or isn't a cue, we're taking a big gamble. So like we said earlier, if you say it, if you see it, say it. If you hear it, say it. And don't make the decision as to whether you should or shouldn't. So the third thing to avoid when it comes to cues is don't just think you've done all the hard work in data gathering. Don't think cues are just about data gathering. Cues have got to come back in the second half as well. There's no point you picking a queue up, expanding it, asking questions about it, real realizing it's actually quite a big issue in this case, and then when it comes to management, forget it's even happened. So for example, you you know the guy might have given you a cue earlier on about work. So you pick work up, you ask them about it, you realize there's actually an issue that needs to be talked about. In the second half, you've got to bring that back. Now, Mr. Smith, you know, one of the things we need to talk about is your work, because you know you mentioned it was affecting you a lot, and maybe there's things that we can do there. You know, go back to that walking stick. You might have picked that cue up, you might have vocalized it, you might have figured out that this guy actually thought he might need a walking stick himself. So, but the job's not done there. You've got to, when you come back to the second half, don't wait for them to say, oh, doctor, do you think I need that walking stick? Bring it back yourself. Now, you mentioned um, that you want, thought a walking stick might help. Maybe we can have a quick chat about that. That could be something that, that we could look into. If you've picked up a non-verbal cue, like an emotion earlier on, you've picked up that someone's quite down, that this is affecting them quite a lot, you've picked up on being upset. Now, there's no point just saying that and thinking I've done the job. You've got to bring that emotion back later on. Now, one of the things when you talk about Mrs. Smith is, is how it's all affecting you, because you did say it's, it's getting you quite down, and maybe there's some kind of support or some kind of help that we can do for that. So again, cues are not just about data gathering, it's not just about getting them in the first half and thinking you've done the job, you've got to bring them back, just like you bring things back in ICE, just like you bring things like in psychosocial, you've got to start bringing these back in the management plan, talking about them, discussing them, because that's how you're going to make it a global, shared, you know, all those kind of things that they talk about in the management plan, it's about using the data from the first half, and some of the data is the cues that you pick up, it's not just the questions that you ask. So, to recap, Make sure you're bringing these cues back, make sure you're using them to your advantage, making sure you're working with them so that you can make that management plan as effective and as shared and as complete as you can for that patient. So guys, I hope that's been useful. As you can see, cues are a huge part of not only this exam, but just being a GP in general. And there's a couple of things that you can do or not do that can make cues work effectively for you. So keep trying to practice it, pick up on those cues, go with them, do all the things that we talked about in this video and hopefully you'll feel a lot more confident when it comes to the actual big day.
Now, if you guys have got any other particular areas that you want me to do some videos on when it comes to the CSA or anything to do with GP training, then drop me an email or drop me a tweet. My details should be down below. If you guys are doing the exams in the next few weeks, then good luck. I'm sure you'll be fine. And I hope to see you guys soon.